Uh, big doings tonight, man. We talked to Alec Lasley yesterday about the, there was a long list of, of guys that will be in for Hoosier Hysteria. Um, how, how many of these guys are at the serious level of recruiting right now? I mean, I know that Prince Sisley is going to be there, but he's a 25 kid. I, I know he's very serious. It's a serious recruitment, but he's still 25 kid. Are there anybody, is there any in the 24 class that this, this is a serious push that they can make a push with? Yeah, the, the lone official visitor, uh, Caleb Williams from the D.C. area. Uh, everyone else on an official visit, he's he's the one he got in last night, so he'll be here for an official visit. Um, obviously, that's a little bit more significant than, than just an unofficial visit. So when you look at him, he's, he's kind of that guy out of that group that um, I don't want to say is the, the most – you know, the furthest along in his recruitment uh, because he's not, but obviously he's the most serious about kind of Indiana at this point. Um, when you look at some of those other 2024 kids um, and then probably Raleigh Burgess, uh, a guy who's already been on campus a few times from Ohio uh, class of 2024, a uh, big man as well, both uh, four stars. So you, you look at those two guys, uh, definitely the, the two most significant ones when you look at uh, Indiana in their involvement from a recruiting perspective. Uh, obviously, you have a, you know, a couple of big names in the 2025 class as well. Um, the lone one missing out of that that group is Jalen Harrelson, who's out uh, in minicamp for Team USA basketball. So he would have been there, but um, all in all, you have 10, 11 guys who are going to be there. But when you look at the, the two significant ones, it's, it's those two that I just listed. Uh, we'll quickly get to Aaron's and Paige. That, I don't want to say that recruitment is cool, but it, it, it it's, seems it's, like it's it's pretty much it's pretty much past at this point. Uh, Indiana is, you know, comfortable looking at the transfer portal uh, for the rest of the class of 2023 or get some sort of late addition in the spring um, as they have the past couple classes. But I think they're they're going to be they're going to be fine in the transfer portal. We, you know, we, we've talked about this before. They have a lot of open minutes coming up, uh, a lot of need for significant, you know, impact players. And from a recruiting perspective, when you look at a guy in a transfer portal, when you look at uh, probably what Indiana is going to be able to do uh, with the development of uh, Race Thompson, obviously with uh, what Trace Jackson Davis has been able to do uh, under Mike Woodson now going into to year two here. Uh, now you just get to, you know, how, how much of a jump does Miller Cop make? And uh, obviously how much of, you know, of a jump does Xavier Johnson make? And when you look at those four guys, uh, I think all in all, uh, any sort of player in the transfer portal is going to want to come to Indiana uh, when you look at some of those key positions. Where do, where do you think most likely Aaron Page is going to end up? Uh, it's going to come down to Cincinnati or, or Southern Cal. Uh, Isaiah Collier, his high school teammate, going to be making a decision here uh, coming up in the next uh, next couple of weeks. Um, they haven't come out and clearly stated that they want to play together, but uh, it, it's been you know kind of whispered uh, behind the scenes that that could be uh, a big potential there. The two schools that are recruiting him are uh, USC and uh, Cincinnati when you look at the, the common theme there. Um, but uh, it, it looks like USC may be trending a little bit more for Isaiah Collier. So it'll be interesting to see what happens out of, out of that group. Um, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, Indiana is going to be just fine. But now they just need to obviously uh, land a significant piece in the front court uh, in the transfer portal with, uh, with Arrington Page uh, looking like that, that ship has sailed. Yeah, two things. Uh, if he were to end up at Cincinnati, wow, I talked about this yesterday. What a run they are making. Uh, probably going to end up with Flory Badunga now that, that Mark Adams has been hired there. Uh, and they've had some other recruits go there. Uh, um, you've got Mike Roberts there, former IU coach, and um, Rob Fennessy is there. So a uh, big Indiana connection there. Why isn't Indiana missed on all of the major targets they went after this year? Yeah, Any I mean, idea? It's, it's, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, yeah. I, you would have thought that they would have hit one of those. Yeah, and I, I think that you know when you when you sit back and, and look at uh, June and July, um, and you, you have this core group of four or five guys in the 2023 class, you feel pretty confident that you're at least going to land one of them, right? I think there was a lot of uh, assumption that they weren't going to get 
two out of the three of Jamie Kaiser, TJ Power, and Deshaun Harris-Smith. But uh, you feel pretty confident with Arrington Page, especially after that visit. Uh, Indiana did pretty much everything that, that they needed to do. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I think you look at TJ Power and Deshaun Harris-Smith as the two that joined really late for Deshaun Harris-Smith, made up a lot of ground there. Um, but I, I think that was more of an Indiana kind of backing off that recruitment than, than it was Deshaun Harris-Smith going elsewhere and, and picking elsewhere. Um, TJ Power, obviously, you know, when, when the likes of Duke and North Carolina – uh, and a Kansas come in super late in that recruitment, that's obviously going to impact anyone's recruitment, no matter how good or talented you are. Um, obviously, end, ended up at Duke. I, I don't think, you know, you can really uh, call that a, you know, a, a huge uh, kind of sting for, for Indiana at that, at that point, just because there, there's really nothing they could have done. Um, but the, the big two that, that you look at are Arrington Page and Jamie Kaiser, right? I mean, they did a phenomenal job with Jamie Kaiser. The biggest thing there is just the, uh, the locality of, of staying home in Maryland, um, the ties that they had there. Uh, but but Indiana, you know, I don't want it to get lost. They did a phenomenal job in that recruitment just to get him to push his decision back from middle of June to almost two months later in, in, in September there. So um, all in all, I, you know, I think Indiana, they prioritized the right skill and the right players. Um, they just got involved in a couple of them, I think a little bit too late. Um, no, no harm to themselves. I mean, a couple of these guys really blew up out of nowhere. Um, and they decided to stick with some of the schools that were there, you know, and, and came in first. So at the end of the day, Indiana is going to, going to be fine. I think they just need to, uh, need to cast a little bit more of a wider net when they look at key overall prospects that they, that they're really targeting, obviously going into the summer, four or five guys, you, like I said, you feel pretty confident that you're going to get one. Uh, if you expand that to, to maybe seven, you, you're definitely going to get one. So at the end of the day, I think you, you definitely need to to make sure you're you're having a plan B for some of these positions, which it looks like Indiana did not have, especially when it comes to uh, Aaron Tim Page in that front court position. So the, yeah, which is a little surprising, Dustin. Well, I was going to say, uh, you know, you just talked about how, um, you know, Indiana has done a really good job with some of these recruits. Uh, and this is a staff that's still fairly new. I mean, do you think that this is more um, missing out on some of these bigger prospects? Number one, Jim has said this multiple times, the winning's not there quite yet. And, and once that happens, you'll start to see more guys. Um, but do you think it's more of the circumstances with some of these guys? It's, it's not really necessarily what Indiana's doing, but closer to home, other schools are offering – um, you know, other big time schools, I should say, are offering. I mean, is there anything that you think Indiana could do better during this recruitment or is it just all circumstantial because of, of where the players lived, who was offering them um, and those sort of circumstances? Yeah, I mean, whenever you go 0 for 4, 0 for 5, there's obviously some things that they can do better, right? I think you you, you kind of look at the involvement of Mike Woodson earlier on in recruitments. Uh, that was a huge downfall in the previous staff's uh, recruiting pitch. And, and I think Mike Woodson started off really hot in that aspect because he needed to, right? When, when he came in, uh, he needed to, to kind of revamp this roster and he needed to, to get kids quick, um, which he did. But I think that this past summer, he, not to say he waited too long, um, but I think he could be more hands-on in the, the earlier parts of the recruitment. Um, because at the end of the day, as much as, players like assistant coaches and, and, and as much as that is the the connection that may end up uh, getting a kid to to commit there, there still needs to be a, a significant relationship with the head coach uh, in order for not only kids but the parents to feel comfortable and I think he does a, a phenomenal job with the parents um, every every recruits parents talk about that after uh, key visits um, kind of hitting the, the key notes with the with the parents or with the family members. But I think he needs to get maybe a little bit more involved earlier on uh, in the earlier stages with some of these key guys. And then, of course, uh, now this Hoosier hysteria comes in, a big rush. You've got a big group of guys that you can get in, see this environment, um, especially guys that are – some of these are very younger guys that really get a taste of this. Uh, it's important, I think, that they, they see that since – you know, we said the winning is not there yet, only because it just takes a little more time. But the environment and all that goes with it and, and the history, 
that carries a big, big weight. And being in this event probably does a lot uh, for, for especially these guys that aren't from Indiana. Yeah, definitely. And, and especially this year with the list that they have and, and, and having two commitments who are going to be there as well, and Ja'Kai Newton and Gabe Cups, to, to not only kind of help recruit, but I just kind of help get the message across of, of what Indiana is trying to do and what Mike Woodson is trying to do at Indiana. Uh, is is definitely significant, right? I mean, obviously, Gabe Cup's from the Midwest. Not a huge uh, ask to have him get out there. He's been to Indiana numerous times, even for weeknight games since he committed. Uh, but to get Ja'Kai Newton up uh, on campus, which he hasn't been since his uh, official visit uh, right before he committed, um, I, I think that's significant as well um, to, to kind of get that, that family atmosphere, which Mike Woodson's trying to bring back to Indiana which they've lacked for, for so long now, um, it is definitely a key step in the right direction. Uh, also just bringing in numerous guys, right? Numerous high profile guys in the, the 2024, 2025 class um, it is something that you want to do. Uh, I, you know, we, we, we've talked about the Trent Sisley's, the Jalen Harrelson's, right? They're the key in-state, uh, in-state prospects in the future classes. Uh, but they're also bringing in some, some other guys in the Midwest. Um, who have played with each other before, who are familiar with each other um, and, and are just setting up a, a very uh, family-like, familiar uh, kind of aspect to, to this event, which has not been there. Um, and then we, we talked about modernizing it again, uh, which is, I think, key for the, the players. Maybe not key for the, the fans who are going to be in the seats, but it's key for the, the 10 recruits who are going to be there, um, the, the players who are going to be there. Uh, and then, you know, you rope in uh, the pro day, which Indiana has uh, this afternoon as well. And that's another significant about that. step. Yeah, another very significant step forward, uh, which, uh, you know, I think all 30 teams or NBA teams were invited to, uh, to attend. I think you're going to get pretty close to that number through talking to a few people. Um, but, you know, Indiana is doing all the right things to modernize this program uh, while still keeping that history and tradition there. Um, because, you know, let, let's, let's be honest and, and say what it is. You know, a lot of these kids – don't know a successful Indiana basketball program, if not every single one of them. So in order to get them on campus, they need to hit all the right buttons of modernizing uh, what this this history and this tradition is all about. And then when they get them on campus, you, you kind of wow them with, you know, just how significant, um, you know, the, this Indiana program has been for college basketball. But the only way to do that is is make it appealing to, to actually get kids on campus. Yeah, and recruiting, it's a, it's a dance. And because it's not as simple as, as a lot of people think. When, when a kid is offered a scholarship, it's not as simple as him just saying, okay, yeah, I'll take that. Right. It, it, does, it does not work that way, although you wonder why. There's a level. There's a hierarchy of importance, and it's a dance. And I think Woody is still getting his steps in that dance because he – it's like he, he sets his eyes on one partner and then kind of gets jilted. But when you do that, you kind of jilt the other people. And uh, that's where See, I, I think I think it, I think it's a little bit of the opposite. Right. He has he has too many feet in too many different areas. And I think he needs to focus a little bit more on uh, a couple of guys. Not to say that that would have won, you know, all of these recruitments. But like I said, I think he needs to. Maybe, you know, if he likes some of these guys earlier on, show them earlier on in their recruitments that, that he's all in, which he has been learning from and which he has been doing with this 2025 class when you look at Jalen Harrelson and Trent Sicily. So I think down the road, right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay dividends. The 2023 class, it was a, not to say it was too late to, to get involved with a lot of these guys because he did have a full, a full recruiting cycle and a full year. But he spent a lot of that just trying to build his roster for last year. So now you look at 2024, 2025, that's when he can really start to develop these relationships earlier on. And you look at the 2024 class, and I'm pretty sure Indiana has been uh, one of the most active programs in sending out offers in the class of 2024 and 2025 up to this point. Um, not to say that that's a good or bad thing, just a, a much different um, recruiting style than what Indiana has done. Um, they're going to have – ample amounts of targets now they just really need to hone in on the key you know six or seven that they really really want um which they have been doing a much better job of in future classes than they probably did in the 2023 class 
and this is my like five years ago this would not have even been a question uh or something we even thought about but it, it makes me wonder is there i don't know the emphasis is the right word because they're trying to go after these recruits and get them for those specific classes but i also wonder if you're casting a wider net is there a thought that you know what we might not get this kid in the 2024 class but if he ever enters the transfer portal we want to make as an impression on as many players as possible just because that's how much the game has changed i mean is that is i don't want to say that that's a focus point but is that a thought that would cross anybody's mind that we need to make an impression on as many players as possible because they might leave kansas they might leave duke after one year and we need to make a good impression so that if they do hit the transfer portal they do um you know are looking for another option indiana's you know it's it's still in the back of their mind yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Absolutely, and you, you also do it for future relationships, right? So if you're if you're maybe interested but not super interested in a kid um, in a in let's say a 2024 class, but uh, right behind him on the same AAU program or on the same high school team, there's a 2025 kid who you know you're going to be you know both feet in. You want to make sure that you build that relationship with the coaches, uh, with the people around the program earlier on, and at least show that hey, you know. Even if you know that we're not super interested in this kid, we're at least going to, uh, you know, come to the open gyms. We're going to do X, Y, and Z, um, and at least, you know, give him a little bit of love. Um, at the same time, we both know that we're going for the kid, uh, kid behind him, or, or the kid in the next class, or anything like that. So, at the end of the day, you know, re recruiting and recruitments are all about relationships. That's 99% of the time, kind of what wins out. Um, and the only way to do that is, you know, be a consistent face uh to that prospect but also to the coaches and to the family members um and that that does mean more than just you know phone calls and, and text messages that, that does mean showing up and um i think that's what uh you know th this staff has done a, a good job at uh, i think mike woodson needs to do a better job of it um but i think he he's starting to realize that and that's why with these future classes he's he's done a much better job